<laughs> no, don't. You're being such an assistant cat. <laughs> oh, no. Everybody's coming. <laughs> I'm trying to separate out. These are... Inca, can you move a sec? Thank you. These are spindles that I sowed as seeds a couple of years ago, and I've let them grow on for a few years in one, um, this one container. So I'm separating them out to pop them on and let them grow bigger before I release them. And as you can see, no. <laughs> You're rubbing your head on the container that I'm weeding the stuff out of. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I've admit, you are such a funny cat. You are such a funny cat. Anyway. <laughs> so, my assistant feline. He likes planting snowdrops and separating spindles. <laughs> or rather, he likes divide, helping divide snowdrops. But spindles are a vital part of the biodiversity for um, because of the seeds and um, the blossom. The blossom in spring and the seeds in autumn. And the birds absolutely love spindle seeds. So I grow as much spindle as possible. I'm always sowing and planting spindle all over the farm because birds absolutely love spindle. So there's a baby spindle. So some of the spindle, it's interesting. So some of the spindle is big and some of it's small. But that's why I, when I collect the seeds, I plant a whole bunch in one container and then some will germinate in the first year, the second year, the third year. And so now I'm just separating out with oven mitts assistance. So that's another one, another baby spindle. Oops, there we go. There's another squeegee tiny baby spindle. And oven mitt, of course, is assisting. There's another baby spindle. And there's another baby spindle. Look at that beautiful fibrous roots. So I'm going to plant that into another pot. You're such a spindle seedling separator assistant. They'll get a good dose of water because they're going to be in a bit of a shock when uh, they're separated from... Oh, there you go. are a cat of cats, aren't you? <laughs> and how many? We've got a few left. Some baby spindles. Isn't that a baby spindle? A baby spindle. Okay. Whoops. There's a big baby spindle. Now, next stage. Oops. So that's where I was separating out um, the spindle from the growing medium that I'd been growing it in. And I have the pots for the spindle here soaking. Now, the soil I'm using is not fresh compost at all. It's what was in old pots that had tulips and other things because you don't need, spindle doesn't need uh, fresh compost. And here I've put the spindles into this water bucket. So they're gonna be full of water um, as much as they can possibly drink um, while I'm uh, 
planting them on. And I will just leave them soaking in these containers. I love old washing up sinks. When they start cracking and stuff like that or get too old or too marked and stained, uh, this is what I use them for. So they're really good like that. So here's another spindle. So all these spindles are gonna go um, be transplanted. And then this coming winter, I will plant them out in places. So they'll have another growing year uh, being protected by me from other plants overshading them and stuff like that. But I'm gonna work away at that then now, planting on my spindle, my beautiful spindle. So here I've transplanted all the spindle. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven spindle. And I found this succulent in amongst them, so I potted that on because that'll grow big, or sedum rather. And this oak tree, I was stupid clearing something up uh, earlier today over there where all my baby oaks are, and it fell down, so I've had to repot it up. So, yeah busy constantly repotting and the dogs are all barking somebody might be arriving in the yard so I better go but I potted this on this hydrangea I'm constantly potting on my hydrangeas uh, I better go these are wonderful these are peonies that I grew from root stubs the root stubs were literally no more than an inch and out of curiosity to see if they work so some stage I've got to pop them on. So there we go. Looking good. A lot of work, but what's lovely is I love doing it. I'm lucky in that respect. Oh, these are the um, um, dog cherries that uh, I repotted yesterday. And look, a leaf cutting bee, you can see is using its leaves. They love using dog cherry. You can see there as well. Those are leaf cutting bees. They come and they'll land here and they'll cut in a circle and it's for their nest. You can see there's some more leaf cutting bees. But the dog cherry, see it's, dog cherry is such an amazing Northern European native or Irish native that we need to keep reproducing. Out of the five cuttings last year, only three, and hopefully these will live another year, and then next winter or spring, I can plant them out, and hopefully they'll grow on, but that's uh, my dog cherry collection. Oh, these are more geranium cuttings that are growing on as well. This is an excellent uh, hydrangea cutting I took, uh, and it's responded really well. You can see it's one of my cuttings, because when I do the cuttings, I stick them in to get them to root right up next to the container. So I had four in here. There were four all the way around, but only one took. So this one took. So I'm now going to pop this on. I'm going to keep it in the same pot. I'm just going to take it out of this and put it into the middle of the pot. So I'm thrilled that this hydrangea took. You can see this is the remnants of the cutting where I cut the top off here. And so I've got to chop the dead bit out, but it's doing really well. Very pleased with that.